What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Keyshot quick tip. Let's talk about adding surface dust to your models using textures in Keyshot. There are quite a few different ways to create surface imperfections inside Keyshot. Some are quick, simple, and to the point, while others can get pretty convoluted and require many nodes within the material graph to achieve. In this video, I'll be covering some of the basics using a few of Keyshot's built-in textures. This should, however, serve as a great starting point for creating more complex and intricate surface weathering for your future Keyshot projects. To get started, you can really work with any type of geometry, but in this case, I'll be working with the screen of this retro TV scene that I've put together. If you'd like to get a closer look at the material graph yourself or experiment with the scene, you can head over to the cloud library and download the model from there. With your scene open, go ahead and select the surface you'd like to add your dust to and open the material graph. From here, right click the material graph workspace, go to your materials and select diffuse from the top of the flyout menu. Then connect your new diffuse node to the label input of your parent material. Go ahead and change the diffuse layers color to something a little closer to white. This is going to be the color of your dust, so pick a color or value that works best for you. At this point, we're essentially going to mask out parts of the label material to create a dust-like effect that's going to sit on the screen surface. To do this, we're gonna start by using a spots texture from the texture flyout menu and attaching it to the label material's opacity input. You'll then wanna select the spots texture node and hit the hotkey C to enable the node's color preview. Just a quick tip, Isolating a texture using the color preview hotkey tends to make editing your texture significantly easier, so I highly recommend making that part of your normal workflow if it isn't already. So with the spots texture open in the color preview, I'm going to adjust the scale of the texture to something that looks to scale for my specific model. This is going to vary based on your individual scenes and models, so just try to adjust your scaling to work best for your specific scene. In this case, I'll be using a scale of about 1.5 cm, and then I'll adjust my levels and density until I get a somewhat uniformed white noise type effect, which you can see on the screen here. I'll then go to my spots color and background color and invert the colors. It's important to note that when using opacity in Keyshot, black colors will be hidden while white colors will show through. We're gonna wanna make sure that the spots color is changed to white and the background color is set to black. At this point, the base layer of your dust material is complete. The next step is going to be masking away some of that dust so that it looks less like a white noise texture and more like a realistically dusty surface. To create this effect, we're gonna to need to use a color composite node and a secondary texture that will help us mask out portions of our dust. The easiest way to add a color composite node is to right click the line attaching the spots texture to the diffuse and select color composite from the utilities flyout. You'll then need your second texture to define your mask. I'm gonna go into the textures library and search for the dusty painted metal texture, then drag and drop it into my material graph and connect it to the background input of the color composite node. From here, I'll change the color composite blend mode to multiply. At this point, you'll notice that little's changed with the base dust layer. That's because the texture map is predominantly white, and as I mentioned earlier, white causes the material to show through, and black causes the material to be hidden. So to get the effect we want, I'll need to adjust the values of the texture to get a more varied effect. To do that, I'm going to attach a color to number node by once again right-clicking the connection line, selecting the color to number node from the flyout, and hitting the hotkey C to preview the node. I'll then make adjustments to my input and output parameters until I get the dust coverage I'm looking for. And last but not least, we need to cover the rest of the model in dust since it's clearly an old TV that hasn't had much use in the last decade. So the easy way to do this is to shift click and select your diffuse material and all other nodes that you just created. Copy the selection by right clicking, then open up the other materials in the scene you want to add your dust to, Paste your selection in their respective material graphs and attach the diffuse node to a label input. Again, this is by no means the only way to create dust effects in Keyshot, but it is one way that offers a lot of flexibility and allows you to stack different textures to create even more realistic dust coverage in your Keyshot scenes. 
As always, if you're interested in more useful key shot content, hit that subscribe button and get notified as soon as new videos hit the channel. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this quick tip in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, give it a like and share.